Hello and welcome to the video. This is a video talking about a couple of things. Talking about things like flight controllers, that kind of little monster. Uh, the kind of stuff that I've done loads of videos on already. Things like iNav, the Eagle Tree Vector, things like Pixhawk, and also things like this. Uh, these are two of the latest Hobby Eagle stabilizers. I've actually got three of them in here. I was about to do a video um, talking about them and setting them up. I actually got them from Motion RC. Motion RC has been in America for a long time, but actually in Europe now. So if you're interested in getting planes, it's another option for us in the EU to get planes and pieces for. But anyway, back to the point. I was in the process of putting a couple of slides together to start showing how to set these things up and I had a fantastic question from a gentleman called Eric. So Eric, this is a massive shout out to you. Hopefully this will help you understand. And this video is really aimed at those of you fixed wing pilots that might not be using stabilizers or flight controllers and not be sure exactly what it all does. Now, Eric's specifically talking about flight controllers, but with me having stabilizers here as well, it's a great opportunity for me to kind of just talk about the differences between them and where you potentially pick one over the other. So Eric, hopefully by watching this video and those of you fixed wing pilots who haven't yet played with stabilizers or flight controllers, hopefully you'll figure out whether this is something you even want to get involved with. So the first thing we need to talk about is what do stabilizers actually do? Now, the stabilizers themselves look like little receivers, and they go in between the radio receiver that's listening to the radio that you're holding in your hands, and the servos and the connections that you normally have in a fixed wing model. And essentially, it's a little computer with a gyroscope and accelerometer that's feeling the movement of the craft, and then comparing with that with what you're asking the model to do with the movement on the sticks on the radio. And if it detects something that's going on that it doesn't like, then it's going to change how everything behaves. So if I grab a little Spitfire here, uh, so for example, a little plane like this, I mean, uh, unfortunately, this is one of those little um, bind and fly numbers, great little model, but no room to put a stabilizer inside but smaller models in particular tend to get knocked around by the wind so when uh, you're flying this any little gust of wind will make it flick and roll and dance around the sky a stabilizer will detect that uncommanded movement and automatically put in the aileron elevator or rudder control to make that much less so what it essentially does is make the model feel and fly like a much, much bigger model. Now, modern stabilizers actually have an awful lot of other features as well. And two of the ones I have here are quite sophisticated. So we're looking here at things like the A3 Super and the A3 Pro. Now, if I just bring up a slide, let me talk about what these actually do. So first of all, as I just said, it makes the model feel like a much larger one. I'm sure those of you that fly fixed wing, if you fly a model that's only got a meter wingspan and then fly a model with a two meter wingspan with a lot more mass, the way they behave in the air, that additional weight, that additional mass, that additional stability is something that you can feel. And the stabilizer brings that stability, hence the name, down into the smaller craft but they'll also do a lot of other things as well. So there are other modes that are available in more sophisticated stabilizers, and particularly some of these more advanced things from people like Hobby Eagle have additional modes in there as well. So it doesn't just provide that stabilization so that the small planes act and feel like bigger planes, they'll also do other funky stuff. So I'll just use this little model in my hand to kind of demonstrate some of these things. So the other thing that you can do, some of them have a 3D mode. Uh, so that means that you can put it into something like a knife edge and the stabilizer will actually do an awful lot of the work of keeping that knife edge in position. So rather all of the little micro corrections that you're going to need on the rudder and the other control surfaces to keep that knife edge flying down the flight line, you can kind of put it in the attitude you want and the gyroscope will do all the rest of it for you. The other thing that some of them do is they will limit the movement of the model. So you'll only have a certain amount of roll and you'll only have a certain amount of pitch. 
And that is very useful if you are teaching somebody to fly and then maybe a little bit aggressive on the sticks. I know lots of trainee pilots, uh, when they get into trouble, will bang the sticks to the edge of the limits, desperately trying to recover and usually make the situation worse. Now, if you have the ability to have a plane that will only bank to a maximum angle, it means that they can't overbank it and start to get in a situation where they're going to start rolling and get into a tailspin and be in big trouble. The other option that's available in some stabilizers is the ability to self right So if you're flying around and you get into trouble, you can flick a switch and the plane will self right Now, usually the way that works is that you have to have sufficient height uh, because it will usually use some height to get back to a stable position. But that being set up as an oh dear switch is a really handy thing to have, particularly if you maybe are at the edge of your line of sight, maybe you're getting a little bit dazzled by the sunshine, you can't quite tell which way it is because you're looking at silhouette, you have that optical illusion kicks in, you're not quite sure, you can flick the switch and get it to level off and then that gives you the ability to figure out uh, the orientation and recover the craft. And the last one is an auto level where if you're flying along, as soon as you take your hands off the sticks, the plane will automatically get back to a level attitude. And that's particularly useful if you're gonna do things like FPV. Um, along with the limit, it means that uh, you have a much more stable flight. In fact, a lot of the FPV craft that I currently fly that I really enjoy have some kind of stabilizer or flight controller in that do that for me. The only word of caution here, of course, is that if you have a plane that is going to self right and to fly itself in the event of a problem, be careful about how you set your fail safes. You don't want your fail safe set so that uh, in the event of an issue, the plane self rights and continues to fly along with a prop turning because then it's going to fly right until the battery runs out and that could be three or four miles away. It's going to make it very tricky for you to find the plane. So let me very quickly talk about what those things are actually called in stabilizer speak. So if you're looking at things online, what are they called? So that ability to get rid of the uncommanded movement when you're flying a smaller model in wind or a bigger model in wind, actually it helps with that too. That's usually called something like 2D mode um, or stabilization. If you are looking for the ability to fly a plane and have it locked in one particular attitude, in fact, some stabilizers will actually allow you to prop hang and things as well. Um, then that's usually called 3D um, or attitude lock or sometimes called 3D mode too. Then typically trainer mode is usually talking about the ability to limit pitch and roll and also have that ability to self right when you take your hands off the sticks. And then you've also got the auto recovery, the ability to have a little switch on your radio that when you flick it will cause the plane to self right and fly straight and level. And then, as I said, where just by flicking a single switch, as long as you've got the thrust in your model, of course, it'll pop it into the air and it'll just hang there. So stabilizers are pretty sophisticated these days. And in the next couple of videos, I'm actually going to uh, put these in a plane or two and show you how to set them up. But what about flight controllers? Well, flight controllers can do pretty much all of those things as well. Except for hover mode, I've not come across one that will actually let you do something like prop hang, um, but that might have changed recently. Check the manual for the system that you're looking for. But in addition to all those other things that you can do with a stabilizer that we've just talked about, it also gives you these additional benefits. In flight controller land, they use slightly different names, but they basically do the same thing. So a trainer mode, it will be called angle. That limits the uh, pitch and roll of the aircraft and also has the self level. Then you have horizon mode, which if the sticks are towards the center of the radio, then that basically behaves like an angle mode. If you stick it to the edge of travel, then you can do flips and rolls and loops. So you can still do aerobatics, but have the safety of having the aircraft return to level flight when you take your hands off the sticks also gives you ability to add a GPS as well. Now, I've done quite a few of these on the channel. I'll talk about them at the end, but by sticking a GPS on an aircraft, it does mean that you can do some pretty amazing things. You can do things like loiter, where the plane will actually fly in a big circle above your head, um, or you can do things like return to home. Now, why would loiter be useful? 
Well, it might be that you are handing the radio between two pilots as part of a training exercise and you can essentially park the plane in the air as you hand the radio across. Or return to home is the one where you can set it up as part of a fail safe or you can set it up as a flight mode. So you flick the switch and it will fly back to you. Some advanced sophisticated systems like the Pixhawk can actually land the plane as well. It's also able to fly autonomously. Now, things like um, the Mini Vector, uh, I've done a whole series on the Vector already, and I'm going to do the setup of the Mini Vector soon. That's from Eagle Tree, or something like this thing here, uh, a traditional flight controller running something like iNav Flight, um, or the Pixhawk will allow you to upload a set of instructions into the flight controller and have the plane fly those autonomously. That's really handy if you want to just do a little bit of uh, demonstration. Uh, people who do things like surveying and mapping use it a lot. It's also handy if you're going to do things like FPV, you can essentially get the aircraft to fly itself and go along for the ride. Improved fail safe and safety options. The ability to have the plane head for home if something goes wrong also means that you have that additional fail safe option. So rather than just have all the control surfaces go to a predefined position, usually the throttles off and it kind of coasts into the ground and smashes into pieces, the GPS system will bring it home and uh, fly over the top of you and hopefully you'll be able to reacquire the radio and uh, bring it down safely if you haven't already set up some kind of auto land feature. Other thing you can do is you can also get an on-screen display. If you're using goggles and flying FPV, then it means that you can add an on-screen display that's gonna show you battery status, height, direction, distance to home, airspeed. You can add pitot sensors onto them as well, so you can get ground speed and airspeed, which helps you figure out what kind of wind conditions you're currently flying in. It'll also give you how efficient the flying is being, so how much time you have left with the way that you're flying currently, all that kind of goodness, really, really handy stuff. So if you are thinking of flying FPV and you want to be able to see the status of the aircraft in the edge of the image, then a flight controller is a great way to do it. It also will push a lot of telemetry back from the radio. Some flight controllers have the ability to read the battery voltage and that allows you to have that all that information along with all that telemetry information including the GPS position of the aircraft sent down to your radio. So if you're using something like a Tyrannus radio you can have all that information all that telemetry stuff actually saved to the radio and then in the future you can go back and you can actually use things like Google Earth to see exactly where you went and to map that flight out in 3D. So you can do an awful lot more with it, as well as have alarm set for your telemetry. So maybe if you accidentally tip your eye off the altitude and you go over the altitude that you're allowed to fly at, or you approach that altitude, you can have some kind of alarm go off on the radio as well to warn you that you're getting a little bit too high. It also allows you to alter a lot of settings in the radio. A lot of the stuff on flight controllers these days is integrated. So the camera that you're using, the FPV equipment, um, you can access the menu inside the flight controller and by using special protocols, things like Smart Audio, Tramp HV, um, the run cam technology, you can kind of set all the different pieces that you want in there as well. So you don't have to take the plane apart, start plugging in USB cables, which is pretty smart. Thing of course with flight controllers is with the flight controller you are going to have to be comfortable using a computer because there's usually some kind of interface that you have to go through to configure everything. Uh, things like the Eagle Tree Vector you can get away without using a computer at all. If you have FPV equipment all set up you can do it through the goggles um, and even advanced stabilizers like these ones that we're looking at or we will be looking at shortly from Hogby Eagle. The most advanced one also has a computer program as well that you load up on your computer and you use to do all the settings as opposed to have little LEDs LEDs and button presses to set it up. So you are going to have to be reasonably comfortable using a PC to get that working okay. Last comment here is if that has whetted your appetite and you're interested in looking more at flight controllers, I have put flight controllers lots of different types in loads of different fixed wings. So go and have a look on the channel for my videos on the Eagle Tree Vector, on the Pixhawk and on iNav Flight 2 and I'll show you how to put all those things together. So hopefully that explains the difference between things like the stabilizers 
and hopefully it gives you an idea of the kind of differences between stabilizers and things like flight controllers as well. If you're just looking for the basics, stabilizers are relatively inexpensive and a lot easier to set up, a lot faster for a lot, an awful lot of people. But if you want some of those kind of features that we've just talked about, on-screen display, GPS features, return to home, increased fail-safe, and additional modes, then a flight controller is definitely worth considering. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video and particularly for watching right to the very end. We try and release a video on Tuesday and Friday and sometimes we'll release one or two extra ones in a week as well. All of the videos on the channel are organized into easy to use playlists. So do have a look in there because if you're interested in a subject, we organize all the videos on that subject so you can find them easily all together in one place. If you like what we're doing, then please like and subscribe and tell others about the channel so they can come and join as well. We're available in all of the usual social media places, particularly in places like Instagram, Twitter, and we also share all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse.